Talking tax with Tom Yamachika on a given Thursday morning. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii. Today we're going to talk tax about the economy. It's the economy. Moo. Okay, with Tom Yamachika. And um, that's a kind of riddle about the moo. But the hint is um, to get milk, you still have to feed the cow. And in the course of this very interesting discussion, Tom will explain exactly what he means by that. Welcome to the show, Tom Yamachita. Uh, thank you for having me on the show, Jay. Uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful Thursday morning, and, uh, and we're talking about it's the economy. <laughs> you, may, you may have heard about it's the economy stupid, uh, which is the phrase coined by uh, the Democratic strategist James Carville in the uh, Clinton campaign against George H.W. Bush. Um, and it really kind of typifies that the economy is a very, very big concern in everybody's mind. It was then, and I think it still is now. But then it was, it was so much of a concern uh, that Clinton was able to beat Bush even after Bush had enjoyed a public approval rating of 90% the year before on the heels of the ground war in Kuwait. Remember that? That was a long mm -hmm. time ago, but mm -hmm. hey, it was a, uh, uh, and then, and then of course, uh, Clinton had, had his own issues, but was, let's not get into that. No, we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, but the real uh, thing to be aware of is it's the economy. The economy still resonates in people's minds, uh, with inflation being what it is. And with the, uh, with the war in Russia, uh, in, and Ukraine wa waging on, um, our uh, our pocketbooks feel it as well. Uh, every time we go to the gas station, we cringe, and uh, you know that's that's kind of one reason why we want to focus on the economy. Now, on June sixth of uh, earlier this month, the financial site Wallet Hub put out a study called 2022's best and worst state economies. And in that site, our humble little state had lots of reasons to be humble. <laughs> we, were, we came in at a bottom scraping 48th out of 51. They counted the District of Columbia. So uh, the only three states to finish lower than us were Louisiana at 49. Alaska at 50, and um, Senator Joe Manchin's home, West Virginia, at 51. Uh, by the way, West Coast states did very, very well. California was ranked third overall, third from the top, not the bottom. Oregon was ninth, and Washington state had the top spot, first out of 51. Okay. To... But Hawaii had really low ratings for innovation. Can you mention that? Sure. Uh, to come up with their rankings, Wallet Hub examined three areas economic activity, economic health, and innovation potential. Economic activity included things like change in GDP, uh, exports per capita, and state gross public debt as a percentage of GDP. Um, economic health included indicators like unemployment rate, change in non-farm payrolls, great in uh, state personal income, government surplus or deficit per capita, and unfunded public pension plans per capita. And in that, that statistic, by the way, uh, we didn't do too badly. Um, we were 33rd in economic health. And the third category was innovation potential which used metrics like share of jobs in high-tech industries, STEM employment, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial activity, uh, as mentioned by uh, some, some other site called the Kaufman Index of Startup Activity, and inventor patents uh, attributed to the state. And on that statistic, we came in 50th, 5-0 on innovation potential. Uh, again, we were 33rd, on economic health, that was kind of kind of sort of in the middle of the pack. Uh, we got blown out in economic activity as well, ranking 47th there, but innovation potential was where we did the worst. 
at a, a solid 50 out of 51. So part of this has to be our state response to COVID, and part of it has to be mm, state response to the inflationary stress of the Ukraine war, right? Can you can you either confirm or deny that? Well, I I don't think the um, those more more recent events would have factored into the the metrics that these guys are using. Again, they're they're looking at things like um, how many people are in the STEM industry, how many patents do we have uh, that have a Hawaii address on them, and things like that. And th these don't happen overnight. So this so, is this is reaches back uh, what several years, maybe a decade. Yeah, uh, to find yeah. the causes for our success or more likely our failure. That that's right, and um, it it seems you know very uh horrible to me uh in in that just a mere 20 years ago we were throwing everything we had at the high-tech industry as you probably know uh, uh, well i i know that we did some things about the high-tech industry but i wouldn't go so far as to say throwing everything that we had because there was a lot of rhetoric but very little action sorry you know, we, we did enact a um a, a very rich tax credit program uh, called the uh, High Technology Business Investment Tax Credit. Act 221. And Act then 221. Linda Lingle bashed it as much as she possibly could. And the newspaper, mm. Sean Howe in the uh, Honolulu Advertiser bashed it every time he had a chance. So it was, yes, it was a, a very visionary statute, but boy, you know, political problems and political attacks on a regular basis. And as a result, investors were scared away. I could give you more information if you like. I followed it closely. Oh, I'm sure you did. And then uh, we also enact, I mean, we also made some government institutions specifically for high tech, like the high tech, uh, the high technology development corporation. Uh, that, was, that was out of the nineties. That was out of the nineties. Yeah. yeah. But that, that got kind of fueled and uh, we had. Actually, Linda Lingo wanted to kill it. Well, yeah, but but I would, two I two was one, the chair, Tom. Yeah, of course, but but two two one was enacted by the previous governor. Just just at the end of the Caetano administration. That's right, and then and then the new administration and the new tax director came in and they started you know beating it up like crazy, saying that there were you know there was uh, prolific revenue leakage, uh, some of which was true. Okay. And yeah, it was guys, I mean, I think it, it's it's a it's it's another show, but um, there, you know, I, I wouldn't say. I think we can agree that uh, although we might have wished um, to diversify into tech in the early two thousands, we didn't actually make a commitment in that regard. And what we did was more talk than action. Okay, but that that again is one of the glaring things in this Wallet Hub study. Uh, where we are in relation to the other states in uh, technology and innovation is is close to the bottom of the pack, if not at the bottom. Um, and that that I think is a is is a crying shame. We 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 have a unique environment here in Hawaii. Uh, we have uh, unique industries that are designed to take advantage of the unique environment. Uh, we have companies like Oceanet that are coming up with, um, you know. New innovations in the uh, uh, in the biohealth space, um, and uh, in sensor technology and other things, uh, we have uh, agricultural companies that are that are saying that hey, this is a great place for agricultural innovation you know, because we have three growing seasons in in a year where most of the mainland has just one. Uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So what are we doing wrong? Where are we falling down in the tech space? And, and since, since you've kind of been intimately involved in that, maybe you've got some ideas. Well, um, we, we weren't willing to put the money down um, and uh, we weren't willing to offer true incentives to, you know, tech entrepreneurs. I'm talking about tech. And to switch to agriculture, the same phenomenon 
existed in agriculture. We weren't willing to put the money down and we weren't willing to offer fruit incentives to um, young entrepreneurs who would go out and be farmers. And as a result, um, again, you know, I mean, it was very clear, yes, we should do this. Yes, it's important. Um, but when it came down to legislative actions, mm -hmm. very little, nada. Uh, and the um, gubernatorial initiatives were uh, uh, limp and they didn't go anywhere. And the result is, um, you know, that in terms of incentivization toward diversification, uh, nothing much has happened in 20 years. A lot of talk beginning. But, you know, even the talk died out after a while. And finally, uh, I think, you know, inherent in that stat is the fact that we have, we have this problem with permitting. Um, you want to get a permit for something, you want to you start a business or be an entrepreneur that requires a permit. Oh, my goodness gracious. It takes Well, so and, long. And, and we have a, a plethora of industries where you need a permit. In most states, you don't. Uh, but we have more regulated industries than I believe any other state. Yeah. So those factors, you know, they play together and together they're kind of a, a scissors and they clip off any, any initiative. And the result is that we have become, and this isn't just yesterday, this is probably mm, within that 20 years, we've become a, a state of consumers, <laughs> but not producers. Um, and, I, you know, it's, it's very sad that we've abdicated everything to hospitality. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we certainly have um, some uh, natural uh, disincentives to manufacturing, right? Because anything that we need for manufacturing inputs has to be shipped in and out, which adds a layer of cost that, that uh, others don't have. Uh, but 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 why is that true for for high tech? I mean, we, we you know you don't necessarily need manufacturing inputs. You need you need ideas. You need know how. Um, you need well, maybe for one some... thing. Our best and brightest leave town. Ah, that's <laughs> that's a big problem. And for uh, for another thing, and this happened in the Act Two Twenty One scenario, uh, to the extent that the best and brightest come here in search of you know, uh, entrepreneurial activities uh, in search of uh, organizations that have been funded by capital from elsewhere in order to do tech here on the, on the strength of our vision, if you will. Um, when they saw what happened to Act 221, they left. And so all this talent that came from the mainland that was going to participate in this, um, you know, reorganization of the, of the various sectors and the diversification of the economy, they saw how difficult it was. They saw there was no place for them and they took off. And so you had, again, two factors working together on that. One is the departure of the best and brightest to the mainland where they were going to get an, an education in tech and are going to get paid more in tech and have a better life with that. Uh, and the other is the people who came here thinking it was going to be um, you know, a diversification to tech. They saw and they left and that was it for them. And they haven't come back. You know. Yeah, and that's kind of a um, that typ typifies a, a bigger problem generally, and that is, you know, people generally were and are uh, packing their things and getting on planes with one-way tickets out of here because, you know, for one reason or another, they can't make ends meet. Yeah, Kali'i Akina of um, <clears throat> Grassroot Institute has been writing about this and speaking about it for years. And, uh, you know, it's a true fact, and his point is well taken. Um, namely, that um, we're we're losing um, our people uh, in all in all sectors, not just tech, and because they can't make a life here, they can't buy a home here, they can't you know get married and raise kids and and have the kind of middle class experience that um, you know that they believe is happening on the mainland. Um, and so we have a serious problem, and I don't think, and this is I guess the point of our show, that the uh, state government. Um, both both the, the governor and the legislature and the committee chairs um, and, and, and the um, you know, various heads of the agencies fully understand that we have a culture that goes moo. Tell us what you mean by that. Well, a number of legislators, in, in my humble opinion, have forgotten um, that they're supposed to be serving their constituents and not the other way around. 
a lot of a lot of people at the legislature, and you know, and I've seen this over several years, um, following and testifying on tax related bills there since I don't know how how long have I been doing this? Like maybe eight eight or nine years so far. So some people really believe businesses and wealthier individuals are not people or a collection of people, but they're cows to be milked. And that's where the moo comes from. That's where they think the economy is going to be driven because all they need to do is milk the cows. But uh, I got news for you. If you want the cow to give you milk, you got to feed it. Okay. And I don't think they, they understand that. Well, you know, I think it, you know, I, you're, this is ab absolutely true what you're saying. In my experience, I have seen this and I have come to the exact same conclusion about it. And, and I admire your analysis. On the other hand, I want to extend it. Um, this couldn't be possible unless the public itself, the electorate, uh, also felt, um, you know, this particular culture point. Uh, let, let's just squeeze business. Hawaii is an anti-business state. Um, and there are so many ways, um, you know, that we could help business, which we don't help business. And uh, the rhetoric doesn't help. You know, you've got to change the whole culture and the way people think about business. Uh, <clears throat> I remember I was in a, a liquor commission meeting representing a client who wanted to open a bar in Waikiki. And um, there was opposition to that. And um, uh, I will never forget one of the liquor commissioners was cross-examining my client. And he said, actually it was a she, she said, um, so you take money in, in this bar, yes. And you pay your expenses with that money, yes. And you have something left over, yes. Then you have profit, don't you? Yes. Ah, I've got you now, profit. And he or she spat out the term profit as if it was evil. And I don't think we fully understand. This is the government speaking. Um, I don't think I don't think that we fully understand that profit is a good thing, not a bad thing. I don't think we fully understand that you, you make investments in order to achieve a return. Um, I don't think we understand that we have got to incentivize people who are willing to make investments, and we've got to manage investments from offshore. And all of this is like too sophisticated, and and the and the people allow the government to take this position. They don't understand, and there's nobody but the Tax Foundation of Hawaii and maybe Think Tech telling them. Yeah, and and it manifests itself in other ways too. I mean, um, legislative proposals for an empty homes tax, for example. Um, uh, just kind of like draconian legislation. Uh, there's there have been proposals to escalate the TAT based on how many tourists we have. If we have more tourists, we we step on the tax uh, until until the amount of tourists goes down. Hmm. I mean, what kind of thinking is that, right? Um, well, one one of the elements in the failure of two twenty one and the attack on two twenty one was this, and it came. It came from all over the place. You want to give a tax incentive to those young kids who, those young upstart kids who want to form tech companies? What about me? Why are you giving the tax credit to them? They don't deserve it. I deserve it. And, and, I, um, and I'm envious of them. And I resent the fact that you're giving a tax credit to these kids. And they're wasting the money. This is not a good cause. Um, don't you shouldn't have tax credits uh, for those kids. And so it's just really remarkable. Um, you know, you you really have to have incentives. Otherwise, you have a free market. I guess you could say, and the free market mm, goes where it wants, but it it certainly doesn't develop an economy. Yeah, I mean, we we at the foundation have our own problems with tax incentives. You know, especially if they're you know, more random and scattershot. Um, well, sometimes they're entirely political. And, and they often they are. With an economic analysis. 
you know, that happens more often than not, I think. Um, I mean, there's the, 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 the people who enact our tax laws are political animals. They're, they're political beasts and the legislature is kind of, kind of the zoo here. And, and that's, that's where our laws come from. Politics. Well, I totally agree with you about the move. I agree with you about the culture point where the government is, um, you know, does not respect the entrepreneur, hence the uh, innovation rating in this report. Um, the question, uh, though, is if we, if you and I were to lock ourselves in a room and try to figure out how you change all of this, uh, right, right from, you know, the public opinion to the legislature, to the governor, to the department heads, where would we start? What would we do? Because this is a major problem and is leading us straight into backwater and a lousy economy for decades to come. I mean, I think we have to refocus on, you know, what originally built this state, you know, the spirit of aloha. Um, you know, we, we're here to help one another. Uh, we, you know, even the old kingdom uh, welcomed uh, people from the outside as opposed to, you know, kind of, hey, let's, let's milk them and send them away, uh, which is what the current attitude seems to be. I always felt that Hawaii was a combination of, of cargo cult and paranoia. What I mean by that, <clears throat> this, is, this is my version of the move, um, that there, there's a certain strain in the culture that responds to business and the like uh, that, that feels um, that anything from the mainland is good. And therefore, we have to um, give it ultimate uh, obey sense and, and power and respect. Uh, and sometimes that's right, but it's random. Uh, and sometimes it's dead wrong and it's damaging to the state. And you get people coming in, companies coming in that, that do damage you know, to our state and our economy and our culture here. The other side of it is the paranoia. If people come from the mainland, they're bad and we can't trust them. Um, so uh, uh, we, we dump on them in every way we can. And so no, not, not only the mainland, it, it's, I think it's worse with, with people from other countries. Oh, absolutely. Yes, from outside, outsiders. This is an island mentality, you know, and we have to go beyond that. Uh, and, and the problem is you don't, you don't know which way is going to, it's going to go. And it, it sort of depends on who your uh, public relations and advertising people are. Uh, who knows how to send a message to the powers that be, but it isn't really based on state policy. We have to have state policy here and we have to implement it on a consistent basis. And part of it has to be, we wanna keep our kids here. We wanna offer them jobs in companies that have been incentivized somehow. Uh, and, and we wanna treat uh, offshore investment wherever it's coming from and offshore entrepreneurs, wherever they're coming from, uh, with respect, but also with management. We want to manage them. Um, you know, I'm thinking of Singapore. Singapore has this idea and it works. We don't have this idea and it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not you know, advocating that we, uh, that we manage people in terms of, um, you know, dictating policy, but, but I think we do have to uh, set an environment. We have to you know, lay down the rules. We have to make the rules easily understandable, and uh, and and for people who don't care about the rules, and and you know, we we need we need to have them face consequences. Yeah. So every year at the ledge, you get uh, thousands of bills, and they're from constituents who have some influence. You know, some political power influence over the legislators, and they sign off and introduce the bills. But there are other bills that should be happening. And these bills, I think, should come from legislators. Um, they, it shouldn't be a sieve, you know, a pass-through. I mean, somebody has to be creative. Somebody has to say, hey, let's develop state policy here. Let's think about it. Let's get in a room together and find a solution and write our own bills about policy points that will help the state survive in a, a very competitive world. You know, I think uh, back in the beginning of COVID, we all looked around and said, oh, gee, what? this is an opportunity. As much as it's a challenge to have COVID, 
we can remake our economy. When we come out the other side of COVID, we are going to be smarter, more diversified. We're going to have a better handle on how hospitality integrates with other economic activities in the state. We are going to encourage people um, to do stuff and stay here. And now it's two and a half years after COVID began. And I would say we haven't done that. We have not done that. Um, we, have, we have merely returned like a rubber band right back to hospitality. Yeah. Uh, if we, I think if we want to move forward as, uh, you know, as a state, uh, as a government, we really should be cultivating the uh, you know Aloha spirit, the spirit, the spirit of service. Um, that you know we we in the government are here to serve the people and not the other way around. I mean, people well, should be, people and businesses should be thought of as what they are, as opposed to simply cows to be milked. Yes, I totally terrible. agree. I totally agree. And and the, and the problem is this is deeply ingrained. I mean, if you and I look back over the last few decades, so we see this. Um, it didn't exist this way, you know, early on at statehood, for example, um, but it, it grew and the government became bigger and stronger, more people. Uh, there was a particular incident involving one governor where they asked the governor, how many people are employed by the state of Hawaii? You must remember this time. How many people are employed by the state of Hawaii? And he couldn't answer them. And the press asked him over and over again, how many people, how many people you got? He couldn't answer them. Um, and that's because the state has grown so much. A lot of people work for the state. You know, it's a, it's a career. It's, uh, it's cradle to grave, and then a fat retirement. Um, yeah, and they and they, they are don't regulating make, the rest of us. Yeah, and and, and they don't make it under, easy to understand how government works either. I mean, if you if you were to ask somebody uh, today, how much money does the government have? I don't think anybody can answer that. There there are so many ways in which monies are squirreled away and hidden, special funds and other things, um, that it's really not possible for anybody to keep count of everything. Even the, uh, the legislative agencies in the Department of Budget and Finance who are supposed to keep track of all these things, there's, there's gonna be stuff that agencies won't report to them. We know that, I mean, when the, when the state auditor went and, and, and uh, you know, did, did their audits, they, you know, they, they found stuff here and there. And that's, that's only the stuff they found. What to do, what to do, Tom? Yeah, I think we need to rethink our, our, our government culture. I think we need to do, re rethink how, what government is in relation to the, to the people who gave them the power to be a government. You know, it reminds me of the old parable. I think maybe you were thinking of that. Um, it's uh, you, you um, yeah, you, you keep on demanding things um, and you, you want an early return. You want it right now. You're not willing, for example, to invest an incentive into building something that will give you a return later. And uh, this is a parable. It has something to do with gold or something. And um, so at the end of the day, um, you have with the had parable it. of the three talents. Go ahead, tell it. Um, there's a there's a biblical story, the parable of the three talents. Um, the rich rich man gave one talent of, I, I believe it was either silver or gold. You know, that's one talent was a huge amount of money at that time uh, in biblical days. And then, um, uh, and and the and and dad said he'd come back a year later and and you know see what the see what the sons did with it. And uh, I, I think the first one buried it and, 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 and said, um, oh, oh, dad, uh, I buried it so it would be perfectly safe and, uh, and it would be totally undiminished uh, when, the, when the year came around. And so dad said, next. And the, the second son you know, did something similar. And, and, and the third son, well, what I, what I did was I, I invested it, I made a business and uh, I, uh, you know, I grew it to, to three, three talents and, and here you are, dad, okay? And, um, and, and, and dad basically beat up the other two sons and, and, and gave the, 
the, the, the two talents to the third son. Uh, just, uh, okay, well, I mean, and, and then the point of the story is, um, you know, money isn't, isn't to be hoarded. It's just to be used for the, for the betterment of all. And, uh, you know, employed as, employed as capital is one, you know, is one way to do that. Yeah. And you can't have an, an immediate return. You have to invest it for the long term. And, and, you, and here's a point which we haven't covered, but we should cover now before we run out of time. Risk averse. You know, this, this is all a reflection of risk averse. We, um, we, don't, we don't want to take any risks. Um, we don't want to take any risks on the governmental side. We don't want to take any risks on the entrepreneurial side. So we don't encourage risk. We don't encourage entrepreneurial, um, you know, uh, entrepreneurial courage. And so the result is that people are unwilling to start businesses because they're afraid that the business may fail. You know, the old thing in entrepreneurial teaching is uh, the serial entrepreneur is the one who knows most. And um, to, to lose a business, to fail in a business is a, is a good training experience, and it helps them out of the next business. Um, and we don't really integrate that. We, we, we are afraid of any perceived risk. So the result is we don't have entrepreneurial activity. Now, what makes this worse today is the mom and pop businesses, you know, are, are going out because the mom and pops are getting old and their kids are leaving town or not interested in doing the same business. I mean, I think a good example that was in Civil Beat this morning um, is what's happening in Mapuna Puna. There's a lot of old mom and pop businesses there. Um, Commonwealth REIT came in and uh, raised the rates on them. Uh, and now there's a huge Home Depot project going on there. Okay, fine. But that's a mainland company, a national uh, company. And, um, and the mom and pops who were there before are gone. Uh, there is no local entrepreneurial activity involved in that. So what are we doing? We're becoming a state of consumers. Right. I mean, we're 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 shunning uh, entrepreneurial development and not embracing it. Yeah. And and that's what we have to do. So I hope and, that I and hope... that's the economy, Mo. <laughs> squeeze squeeze the people that you can possibly squeeze, and and think that you're going to do better because of that. If the government can raise more money, mm, that helps us but not really true. You have got to, you've got to incentivize and encourage entrepreneurial activity. We've got to get that message through. And maybe going forward, Tom, in, in you know, future episodes um, of Talking Tax, uh, we can talk, we can drill down on some of that. We can, you know, we can look at incentives that are good, incentives that are bad, uh, look at the level of manage, management we ought to engage in in dealing with, with offshore investment, offshore talent. Um, I, I think that would be a great thread for us to follow going forward. Absolutely. And thank you for having me on the show. Thank you. Great half hour as always. <laughs> Tom Yamachika, President of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, in these very interesting discussions. Okay, Tom, all together now. Oh. Mm. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.